Then, a boy is found floating face down in a pool, and a dispatcher has to help the frantic mother keep her child alive until paramedics arrive on the next Rescue 911. When Tammy Nethercott and her husband Don moved their family to the small town of Merlin, Oregon, they thought their children would be safe. But on the afternoon of October 3rd, 1991, just a few weeks after settling into their new home, one of their worst fears came to pass. While Tammy worked inside the house, she asked her daughters Danielle and Desiree to keep an eye on the two-year-old brother, Christopher. He's an explorer, and I guess that's like normal for two-year-olds to check everything out. We put up a barricade along the side of the pool. It was just like makeshift for the time being. my baby boy in my arms and there's no muscle tone no life no nothing nothing Dispatcher Katie Duncan joined dispatcher Lisa Saul on the line. We're trained to work in pairs, so from there I was going to take over the emergency medical portion of the call so that she could dispatch the ambulance in the fire department. Medic four. The nearest rescue Russell units, including Russell EMT Russell Jess Webb, headed to the scene, around. but they were seven miles away. About a month before, I had a 10 year old drown on me on the Rogue River. I was afraid that this was going to turn out the same way, and it hits pretty hard with kids. It hurts. What color is he? That's all right. Is his head tipped back a little bit? Yes. Okay, now listen to me. Put your mouth over his mouth and nose. And nose. And blow two little breaths to fill up his lungs. Okay. Now wait, now. Settle down yourself. Listen to me. Is he breathing yet? Okay. She was on a roller coaster, and it would have been very easy to lose her. If she looks down again and realized the baby's not breathing, then I would have lost the only rescuer that we had at the scene. That's okay. As soon as we realized it wasn't a pulse, I had to control her and get her back into the sequence. Tip the head back and two more breaths. Watch for the chest to rise. Two more. Is the baby breathing yet? No. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I want you to do next, okay? <laughs> Listen to me. Okay. Put the heel of your hand in the middle of the child's chest between the nipples and push down one inch like your chest, like you're pumping up the chest. Okay? I want you to do that five times. Once per second. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Now, two breaths. And make sure the chest is rising. 
Two more breaths. Come on. One. Oh, come on, Chris. But in a rural setting, especially where this address was, you're talking probably 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes or longer until the very first unit arrives. 13 minutes after Christopher was pulled from the pool, the nearest advanced life support ambulance was still more than three miles away. That's okay, you're doing fine. Five. Okay, two more breaths. Come on, give him the breath. One. I'm not an EMT. I'm not a doctor, nurse, just a typical mother. Turn him on his side. Just tip his head back just a little bit. Is there any more water coming? Listen to me. Tip his head back. He didn't have any color on him except for his lips are purplish blue. I was feeling scared because I was thinking that he'd die. When it comes to food, you need a light beer that measures up. Great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. Taste for yourself. Miller, good call. My view. If faced with danger, what would you do? Would you react in time? See ordinary citizens become heroes. Rescue 911 continues next on Discovery Health Channel. We've been doing this a long time and the child was not coming back. It had occurred to me, but that doesn't preclude you from doing your very best. Mike Worley had heard about the drowning from a neighbor. It scared me to death the first time I looked at him. There wasn't no life in him. I couldn't see him do anything. And he's just a little bitty guy. Keep going. Give him the breath now. Yeah, I want her to keep doing CPR. She's trying. Make sure she does listen. Two breaths. I didn't know where he came from, but that person became a coach on the phone. Ready? One, one, count with her. One, one two, two, three, four, five. She just spit up a bunch of water. That's okay. Roll the baby on the side. Roll the baby on his side. Roll him on his side. Hey, give him another breath. Yeah, come on. Roll him back and give him two more breaths. Keep going. The fire department's there. Keep yeah, going. Here. Keep going, two, though, until they can take over. Four, five. We pulled up to the house, and we knew that it was going to be bad. We were so far out, and he'd been down so long, with a guaranteed minimum of 13 minutes, that uh, it looked bad. It looked like it wasn't going to happen. One, two, three, four. Is the fireman helping now? Okay. Okay. Keep going. I'm going to keep you on the line here until the ambulance crew gets there. Keep counting for him. You're doing a good job. Breathing on his own. The fireman said. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. I felt like, well, we've done our best. It's just kind of like a little relay race. We did our little part in the relay race, and now it was someone else's turn to do their best. Minutes later, the advanced life support unit arrived, and paramedic Jim Bard took over the boy's care. Hi, Jim. Immediately, I went to the child, and he did have a pulse, but he was only breathing about four or five times a minute. Okay. He's disturbed. He's not looking good at all. I have not seen very many children survive this. I whispered to a fireman, we've got to hurry. Uh, we're going to lose him if we don't. Nice and easy. While Christopher was prepared for transport to the hospital, Tammy called her husband Don at work and told him what had happened. I wanted to just floor it and just get home about two miles from the house. I finally met the ambulance. It was like being in a tunnel. I didn't know whether my little boy was alive or not. I actually felt grieving for this kid. It was like he's dying and I'm dying with him. I really didn't expect him to make it. I was letting go towards the end. Christopher was admitted to Josephine Memorial Hospital and examined by Dr. Jim Jeeson. Uh, he, he was extremely critical. He's breathing about five times. We're still assisting. Initial assessment was very dismal regarding the chance for the child recovering neurologically. I went off duty a half hour later. It was really a bad night. I cried all the way home. 
The little boy was taken to Dornbecker Children's Hospital, more than 200 miles away. His parents drove through the night for five hours straight, not knowing what condition their son would be in when they finally got to see him at the hospital. He was still hooked up to all the monitors and everything. But he looked like he had a little more color, and he looked at Tammy and, and he said, Mama. Oh. That was a great feeling. I, you, know, uh, you know, I can't explain it. It's probably like rebirth or something. After two days in the hospital, two-year-old Christopher Nethercott was released without any sign of permanent injuries. We don't send Christopher out with the girls and say, okay, you watch him. That doesn't happen anymore. They're not old enough. They're playing, too, so we watch. But if you have a pool, come make sure it's secured. Not just 95%, yeah, it's going to be okay. Make sure that pool's 100%. It was just unbelievable. You know, he goes from being in critical okay. shape to being home running around. And he's just perfect. <laughs> One month after the accident, the Nethercott family finally got a chance to thank the dispatchers who worked so hard to save Christopher's life. Knowing the child's here as a result of the system is extremely gratifying. It makes everything that we do worthwhile. Let's give Katie a hug. Let's give Katie a hug. Let's give Katie a hug. Give her a hug. Oh, I got you. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911 next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life, medicine, miracles.